What's going on guys? Welcome to episode 21 of Wrecked Bike Rebuild, the show here on YouTube where we take wrecked motorcycles and we turn them into dream bikes and then we give them away. I am Chase on Two Wheels, that is my buddy Brian, and you guys are being floated around by Luke. And in this episode, we are working on the bobber engine. Brian is going to drop some knowledge bombs on us. If uh, you guys haven't caught up with where we are, we got a lot of stuff out of powder coat, so we're gonna do some engine work. I apologize in advance if I do get a little too technical. That happens when I start talking about engines, but I'll, I'll try and keep it as understandable as I possibly can. I listened to him talk with Luke about some of the engine stuff, and I can't wait to have no clue what we're doing today. <laughs> um, well, you have some clue, because the first thing we're going to do is drain the oil. And we can I, have, I have experience doing that. Yes, so we can do that first. If you guys uh, don't know, this show is funded via our via our beautiful people over on Patreon. Uh, that is who gets the break when the show is over. So if you don't and haven't checked out the Patreon page, check it out. It is the top link down below. Without those beautiful people, we wouldn't be able to do these shenanigans. Sorry, making noise. Just go ahead. Just make all the noise. What are you doing? Why? Are you, uh, I'm going to put that like that so then... We can take our super awesome drain pan that you're we doing, have. You're doing like, oh, that's freaking genius. And then just go like that, and let it stick out like that. So as all the oil drips in, it runs down to that side and then we won't make a mess everywhere. Right, so we meant to drain the oil while the engine was in the bike. And the and the bike was on wheels. Right, so literally no like jacks underneath last it. episode. And we got all fired up after we saw the thing on the ground. <laughs> And then uh, everything else, all plans went out the window. Everybody just got dumb. Right. It's so, like, the bike's on wheels. Oh my God, it's so low. That's Okay, all now doing. let's take it apart. And we kind of skipped everything else that we really meant to do. So we've been stressing out about and, how to do the So really, yeah, I mean, we were kind of like, damn, we didn't drain the oil. And now how are we going to do this? And while, after it was up here and we were looking at it a little bit, we saw the drain plug is just right here on the outside edge of the motor. So we're kind of just going to oh so gently... Just do that and take the drain plug out. So uh, yeah, it's a 17 millimeter and just uh, pull the drain plug out and let it drip. All right, so um, just because this isn't really bolted to anything, the easiest way to get that off is with like a one really quick sharp shot. So, so we don't like knock the engine anywhere. So we're just kind of gonna get it you know, real quick. So we didn't. You're like a magician. You like do stuff and like, wait, did it happen? <laughs> did the... <laughs> you know, you and, just okay, want to. You have the gloves on. You can turn that out, and uh, you can get oil all over your gloves instead of these nice cushy ones that will soak it all up. Right. And uh, you can really just drop the drain plug and let the whole thing flow, and try not to make a mess everywhere. I'm trying to press up and okay. So How it, did I it, put should, uh, it should vent through, through the crankcase, but we were kind of messing around a little bit and we happened to put our fancy little hand. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we put our fancy little hand over our crankcase breather so it didn't have any place to vent without taking the fill cap off. For everybody watching, if you are the person that gets this bike and there's a hand in it, I am so sorry. I've done You're everything welcome. I can to make sure these hands are nowhere in the bike. We're gonna but. have to make sure that Chase does a little Easter hand hunt before the bike gets shipped out. To I mean, let's be, I'm not there. doing a lot of work. I'm just like, if I see it, I grab it and then like throw it across the garage. But if it happens, I'm sorry. Are we gonna put the bolt back in just so no more oil gets out when we don't want it to come out? It's probably a good idea. Man, we're I really almost, wish I didn't get we're rid of done, uh, We're almost done draining, so it might take another couple minutes. I bet before. it's going to take as long as it's going to take me to put another pair of gloves on. So what we, we did buy a bucket at, there it is, there's our, our oil drain bucket. Yeah, that's our uh, death liquid bucket. So that uh, fork oil that we poured into that Tupperware should probably get drained into there. That's a great idea, uh, Brian. And then all this oil that's in this thing should probably get drained into there as well. So what does that drain plug smell like to you? Nope. No, seriously. 
I don't, I don't know. I'm, I f peer pressure. So it's, it's kind of important to know the different smells of an engine. I bet it is. I can't wait to find that out. All right, well get a blue rag. You see it's still dripping, so you're not gonna put that plug in. You're like, eh, Dude, I eh, will. Dude, eh. I want to. Am but, I cleaning? Um, Whoa, what is on here? Metal. Oh. Should I clean it off? Show nice. it to the camera. What up, Cam? So right in the end of that is where all of the very fine metal shavings from your engine collect. Wait, is this thing magnetic? It is. There is a little magnet inside. You'll actually clean that out. There'll be a divot. And inside, you'll see a magnet inside of there with the edges of the bolt kind of peened over the end so the magnet doesn't fall out. So that's just going to go back in, you know, a little bit more than finger tight because before we put fresh oil in it, we have to put a fresh crush washer on it. Right. My finger tight, which means it's barely in there. So let's roll this thing over as close as we can to the bench. She spins me right round, baby, right round. Demonetize, you don't have uh, rights to sing that song in this I show. I can sing whatever the hell I want. Well, man, if I knew that, that was the case, we would just be singing everything instead of working in silence. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let you help me this time, Chase. Thanks, Brian. Because you know what? This thing is actually quite heavy. Where can I get a real good grab? Wherever graps? you can. You find some place that feels good to you, and once you get there, you let me know. Do you want me to just do it? Nah. You sure? Because no. if you don't have a good grip and you let this thing go while I'm holding half, it's gonna hit the floor. Yeah, I, I feel, I got that uh, climber grip. Three, two. Okay, it didn't fall, so there's that. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm guessing we're gonna start with the clutch. That's what I was thinking too. Okay, so we'll start with the clutch. When I work on my engines, I always like starting on the clutch because... Give me some. Um, okay, possibly cool. a couple of blocks of wood so we could just lean this over onto... So it's not hanging like upside down, a whole bunch of them, all of them. So you're probably going to want to have these rest like right up against the, the cylinders. Oh, okay. You want one big thing or... Actually, it's going to stay right there. All right, I'm going to reinforce. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be able to find any place to actually reinforce it at, because that's really not going to do anything. That should be. Um, so to replace the clutch pack in this thing, we only have to pull this cover. Okay. Um, do we want to only pull that cover, or do we want to expose the entire side of this motor so we could let people see what's behind this cover? I would personally... Like to see the whole thing come off. Yes, and yeah. take a photo of whatever's inside of there. Okay. I can give you a breakdown of how all this stuff works too. So I will try to absorb as much of it as a as an old sponge right. in a. So sink let's go ahead and do. pull the uh, gaskets out and see which ones we have gaskets for. Because if we don't have this outside one here, then we don't have to take it off. Wait, we're putting that in there? Yep. Nice. All right. So the gasket that we got is only the small cover. Okay. So if we want to take that whole big cover off, we're gonna have to order a gasket for it. Sad times. So the gasket they give you in the clutch kit is only this small piece because that's all you have to take off to... I didn't know we were taking... I didn't know we would have to take off that whole... Side. Well, we don't have to. We only have to take this small cover off, but that's why I was just asking Chase if he wants to take the whole thing off to expose it. But I think at this point, it's probably <coughs> a great idea to do that because we don't really have the gasket to put it back together again. Yeah, we don't have to. We're going to have the other side of it all the Yeah, because it's only one cover. So I guess where we'll start is we're going to... Uh, we're going to take off the clutch cover. Okay. Which We're going to expose the clutch, okay. and then I can go into more detail about the inner and the outer basket. So the clutch is the, these little gear looking things. Okay, so the clutch is many pieces. Okay. Okay. Do we want to just take the clutch apart so I don't have to explain this twice? Yeah, let, let's... You don't have to explain it, like, in the air. Yeah, like let's... When he sees it, like you okay. said... Right. It'll, it'll make much more sense. I said, I did say that earlier today, and I should probably share with you, I could not for the life of me figure out how a clutch actually worked until I saw it. Uh, on paper and then a physical clutch pack and how everything is connected and to how a clutch actually works. Uh, and when I, I finally had that aha moment, I heard the crackle and sizzle like Chase just had before where everything was just like. Wait, hold on, pause. Is a clutch pack the same thing as a clutch basket? No. Oh so the pack, shit. The clutch oh, pack God. goes inside the basket. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Dude, I'm, I'm just autopilot now. So do you understand what we're doing? Uh, yeah, baskets and, and packs. Okay. Patch baskets. So Wait, clutch packs, clutch baskets. Clutch pack, one pack, baskets, two, inner and outer. All right. I, or 
not everybody calls them both that. One's a hub and one's a basket. Well, this is easily coming out, is that? Yeah, they're probably not on there real tight. Oh, okay. Um, like they're probably only like seven foot pounds. Are all these bolts the same? I have no idea. Leave them all in their home. Just loosen them up completely, leave them in the hole, and uh, we'll take them off with the cover and leave the cover aside just as it is so we don't have to mess with different bolt lengths. Yeah. Um, so when you pull the clutch in, it pulls the cable and pulls this arm. And then the arm actuates the clutch. So this is actually connected to the center of the clutch basket. Wait, so you could like reach your hand down hypothetically <laughs> and like... If you were like Hercules, yeah. Oh, it's like that. I mean, there's a lot, a okay. whole lot of, okay. So here's the spring. That's a spring? Yeah. It's a plate spring. Okay. If you can see that it's concave. concave. Yeah. Okay, so you see that it's concave. Okay, so uh, when this spring goes on, there's another plate that goes on the outside of it. When you bolt it down, it flattens this spring out. Oh. So then when you pull this arm, this arm takes the center of that basket and pulls it out and takes the pressure off the spring and allows the rest of the clutch plates to spin on each other. Okay. So there's less friction. Then when you let your clutch go, it lets go of this plate and allows the spring tension to put pressure back on the clutch pack and, goes flat and sticks everything back together again. So your clutch is literally held together with spring tension. That's all that drives the motor to the transmission okay. is spring tension. And these are pretty much like really soft brake pads that run in oil. Uh, we have the clutch arm explained. So the easiest way to get this cover off is to actually turn this the opposite direction. Oh, what? what? Okay. Dude, so, he just turned it and it popped off. So this is the direction that it would normally be in. So when you pull the clutch lever, it's pulling on this cover. So to take the cover off, the easiest way to do it, because this is actually inside this case, and then there's kind of like a little fork on it inside. Okay. So what you do is you push the fork off, and it opens the cover up. It's still stuck at the bottom here. And then the fork will let go of that center hub, and the whole cover comes off in one piece. So that is so inside legit. of there, this clutch is destroyed. Holy cow. Wait, uh, why? We're gonna see, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have to go into detail. These are actual pieces of clutch fiber. What in the hell? This clutch exploded in here. We might have to take a lot more of this apart than we originally thought. Oh okay, shit. Okay, so can you smell this? I know you guys can't smell this, but just smell. What do you smell? Something bad. What does that smell like to you? Just describe it. I don't even... Burnt. Burnt? Is that the... Typically what we describe this as is it smells like campfire. Yeah. Okay. Does uh, that ring yeah. a bell? No, is can, that like automatic? Now you can be like, oh yeah, campfire. I could sign on with that. So when it's you really take, when you drain the oil or you pull this cover off and you mm -hmm. smell campfire, you're in trouble. Uh, that means that your clutch plates have been burned. And the reason why it smells like campfire is because your clutch plates are actually made out of cork. Those things are made, out, made of cork? out of cork? Like what you put in a wine bottle? Uh, I mean, a, a different version of it, but yes, cork. Okay. Uh, you know, it's processed and it's mixed with other things, but right. predominantly that clutch friction material is cork. It's just very dense. It's nuts. So when you soak it with oil, it actually swells. Okay. Um, so if you overheat them and the film of oil comes off and then the actual cork material gets overheated, it right. burns and it smells like campfire. So and then it like starts, you, burning your clutch. you burn your clutch and that's uh, exactly, you're literally burning the clutch. And then when you get it really hot, then pieces of clutch material come off of the clutch plate backing. Okay. So I pretty much described everything that was inside of this cover before. I could see the oil pump and oil pump gear, um, but there is no idler gear that goes from the um, crankshaft to the clutch basket. It's a direct drive one gear to one gear. So, so we need, we actually need to take this outside cover off now. So we're going to have to get a gasket and all that other stuff for okay. it. But we need to take it off because we're going to have to fish all those big pieces of clutch plate out of the inside of here. I'm going to have to guess that this bike stayed running while it was on its side after it was crashed and it smoked the clutch because I mean. So it, it laid on the, 
that side just sat there running and the plates were getting dry. Yeah, the plates got dry and they kind of just... The, that we had you know, to replace. I, would, I would actually even think that the guy crashed it and fell on the side and was still hanging onto the throttle. While it was laying, because they, they will stop running after a few seconds of laying on their side. So he had to like really do, or he was just really, really hard on his clutch, banging gears and whole shots from traffic lights everywhere he went. Cause that's really the only time you see when a clutch disintegrates like that is either some sort of abuse. So you see how big of a spot that makes if you were to lay that all flat. Now, I don't know if we're actually gonna get far enough into this engine to see how big the oil pickup screen is, but it's probably about that big. So if you take that and you cover that much of it, you covered a quarter of the volume that that pump can pick up right. from the bottom. So I'm gonna guarantee you that that's not all of the clutch material that's inside this motor. Is there a secret button to press to make it pop? Okay, so uh, this one doesn't work that way. Okay. There's no secret button. It has little tiny pry points there, there, Right. There usually those pry points work with some place that's either on the frame or on the engine. Like this one, you can get something in between these two. This one, something in between here. This one would probably be a pry point in between the frame rail okay. and this cover. Now, the reason why I wanted you to take all that hardware off and stop is right here behind this cover. Mm -hmm. You see that divot in there? Yes. That divot is going to be where the end of the crankshaft fits into the cover to stabilize it. So before we take this cover off, we're going to tilt this thing back up so it's straight up and down. Okay. And then we're going to work this cover off. Go ahead and uh, there you go. Now just pull it off nice and level. Both sides, wiggle it off. There it goes. No, don't tip it back because all the bolts are going to fall out. You got the engine? Uh -huh. Okay, so there's no washer on here. There's actually a seal and a plate that holds the seal in place. So it doesn't need that washer. So we're just going to lay that down there and get it out of the way. It's so, okay. We're going to take the rest of this part now yep. because we need to take the clutch all the it's so, okay so this is the basket okay and that basket holds the clutch pack okay now the pack is the stack of fibers and steels which is what we have here that's the parts that we're going to replacing okay so these little chips that we found on the inside of the cover are part of the fibers right so we're going to take the clutch apart so we need to Loosen the tension on these bolts around in a circle a little bit at a time. One turn, one turn, one turn, one turn. Take the pressure off of the pressure plate evenly uh -huh. because if you take one side off and you put a lot of sideways pressure on anything, you could actually crack the pressure plate. As oh, you as the one I'm next, loosening it, it's... It's taking up the space with the spring. Right, so these are going to stay tight relatively. Most, most of the way, yeah. Uh, They're all finger uh, loose now. Okay, so just take them all out now. So if you just took this big-ass steel spring and rested it up against this aluminum pressure plate, it would eat right through it. Okay. You'd probably get a couple thousand miles out of it before it ate through the pressure plate and then you wouldn't have a clutch anymore. So they put this nice nifty little seat in here that's a perfect size for the spring. Right. And it just sits steel against steel. And yeah. then now you've got this flat spot that rests up against the aluminum pressure plate and it spreads out the load and it doesn't wear through right. it. So that's gonna stay with our pressure plate. Okay, so here's your pressure plate. This is where the last friction disc for your clutch pack rests against here. And then these teeth intertwine with the, this is the inner basket. So the frictions run the outer basket, the steels run the inner basket. Okay. So when you take the pressure off of the clutch with the arm against the throw out bearing, and it takes the spring tension off of this plate, it actually pulls this open and takes the pressure off of the stack. So everything's not so now or close together. The outer basket is still spinning, uh -huh. but the inner basket is not. Oh, so these are... This is what attaches the outer basket to the inner basket, is the friction between these two plates. So there, one plate will be down, one will be up, and they're just back and forth, and then you, when you pull your clutch in, Every, they're just not close together anymore. Everything pushes together, squeezes real tight. Right. So these outside plates that run off of this basket stick to these that run on the inside basket, and then the power goes down into the transmission. So the clutch is always on until right. you pull in the clutch. That so makes sense. now when you call, the reason you call it a friction zone is because everything has got friction and grabbing together. Exactly. 
Is that one of those aha moments? Oh, right, so now, now you understand how a clutch assembly works. This steel is wiped out, by the way. How do you know so that? So we're gonna show you some comparisons because we have a new clutch pack here and you can see how smooth this is. Right. That used to be covered with little pieces like that all the way around. This side, it is completely wiped away all the friction material down to the middle. We're in trouble. So that's what it's supposed to look like. Versus? Both sides. Oh. oh. Okay, so this is the one that's in our clutch. This is what it looks like. Oh God. So if you could see right here by my thumb are the last two pieces of friction material left on this entire plate. Oh God. We're in trouble. That's... You ready for work? Because we're going to have to blast through this now. This is a total teardown. This went from informational to... To holy shit, we're in trouble. Okay, so to get to that point, like, we're not we're not teaching anymore. Like We're, we're working now. Yeah, we're... We don't have the time. We're full speed. Okay. Yep. So uh, we're at the point now where it's, uh, okay, let's get her done. Okay. So excuse me, please, but we got some shit to do. Man, I picked a hell of a day to have a fucking hanging. What the fuck is that? There's a cylinder. There's the cylinder base gasket. This is the other half of what does all the work. Here's your piston. Oh, that's one of those things. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Nice. All right. You guys really <laughs> didn't do much in episode 21. Like, you started with an engine, you ended with an engine. What if somebody skipped from the beginning to the end and all they saw was the engine cleaned up? Okay, so uh, this now coming out is the shift linkage. Now, what's the plan for putting all this back together? My mind. And then we'll need a, uh, a repair manual so we have all the torque specs. Whoops. Ooh, what the? I just um, turned the oil pump real hard, is what I did. Guys? That thing is massive like alien. That is so weird. What's the hammer do? Uh, it shocks the, the fit. Right. And usually you get it tight and you're pulling on it, you're pulling on it, you're pulling on it, and you tap it with a hammer and the shock lets it, helps okay. it let go. All right. Yep, gloves and glasses. Is this just gonna pop? Violently. There it goes. That one came off nicely. Pulling her legs. Nope. Sometimes they come off nice and sometimes they don't. 
Well, I've had them come off to the point where they fall out of your hands and you drop them on the floor because they shoot off. That's how Iron Man became a thing. There's a flywheel in his chest. <laughs> There's your counterweight. So much of this I'm, I never wanted to know. <laughs> and by never wanted to know, not that I don't appreciate the information, just that I you never wanted to be in the here. position to be like, oh, that's the counterweight for the thing inside the core of the fucking engine. This just keeps, like gets deeper and deeper mm -hmm. of a, and I guess that's like, that's the nature of what we're doing. But Pretty much. And I gotta figure it out. Yeah, this would be, if you wanna look at it like that, this is what pumps the lifeblood of the engine everywhere. So this would be the heart of the engine, if you wanna look at it in that sense. Are you freaking kidding me? No, that's why we had to take it apart. Holy crap. Dude. So this is all clutch material, stopping oil from getting up into the pump. This is what happens when your clutch blows up. So all that material that was there fell into the bottom of the motor, was floating in the oil, and as the oil got sucked up by the pump yeah. to run back through, it got caught in the screen. Thankfully, most of this stuff is big. So it didn't go through, pass through, go through the oil pump, chew the oil pump up and then block passages to the rest of the motor. So it looks like everything got trapped here, but that's not gonna stop me from taking the oil pump apart to check it. The engine would have blown up had it, we just, it would had have. we Absolutely. given yep. the engine to some poor f***ing dude. Or, or, or dudette. Or dudette, dudette yeah. Now, it doesn't look like much, okay? But can you see those nicks right there? Yeah. There's one on right there. Can you see them there? Good. So there's a nick like that on the end of every one of these. Oh. Why is it in the exact same spot? Because it probably had something stuck in the pump as it was going around and around until it beat it up bad enough that it pushed it through. So... I mean, when you get a new oil pump, these are the two pieces you get. So it's not like I'm replacing this whole thing, it's just the pump itself. The inners of the pump, so. Um, this whole pump is driven by this little tiny pin. Well, don't mess that up. Or don't drop it. Because well, you have a hard time finding it. So I'm just gonna put this right back where it lives. Sounds like a really good idea. Oh, I see the central And then you see the area. slots in there. Right. And then this goes back in your home, like that. Now it's on the shaft. And then this goes over the top, Jeez. like that. And then this mates over the top of that and it fits within this ring. Let me actually make sure the pump body is good too. So that's the pump body and the actual pump are the two, two the little, little star piece and little circular. Yep. My brain was not ready. Okay. Um, so the body looks good. So any, anything, I mean, you could literally see that something was run through here. 
but so something got through the yeah, you can, here. screen. Take a look. It definitely got through the screen because it wound up catching on the inside of the pump, but you could see, see the line starts here and then sweeps upward towards the outside edge. Right. Uh, so that was the thing something that- Something was like worked its way, whoop, worked its way in and out. So technically it actually comes in this side on the high side, gets pulled in, goes around and then dumped out on the other side. No, it's very, very fine. Whatever it was didn't make enough of a scratch in it to really be too concerned. So the object that did that was probably the same thing that caused the nicks on the... Probably not. Oh, because that would be in two different locations. Um, not only that, but it would probably be deeper on here because this pump, internal pump part is steel. This is aluminum. Oh, okay. So if whatever, I don't know, because it's in between the two, that very well could have been what was ever in there made its way around, but uh, it's hard to say. Could have been anything. Could have been the way it was machined. Yeah. You know what I mean? That may have been there since the thing was brand new, came out of the, out of the machining. All right, guys. So this episode started as a, hey, Brian, show us some cool stuff with the engine and let's replace the clutch. We got a little bit deeper into that, I think, we, by the looks of things. We went a little deeper. Um, so now we have to order a lot of stuff. We have to do a lot of figuring stuff out to make sure that this season uh, continues as planned. We have a lot of work ahead of us. Thank you guys for getting to the end of this episode. Hopefully you learned something, because we sure did. Holy crap. I know I kind of breezed through a lot of this stuff, but unfortunately we're kind of under the gun time-wise. Yeah, we... And I couldn't really give it too much more of an explanation at the moment. Right, we are in a very tough spot right now, but we'll get it figured out. Regardless, thank you for getting the end of the video, guys. Uh, hit that like button, please. <laughs> we really need, we would love to see you hit the like button in this video for blowing an engine apart. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for supporting it over on Patreon. I'm Chase on Two Wheels, the guy that just took the entire engine apart because he can. This is Brian, and you've been floated around by Luke. We will see you on the next. Sounds so somber right now. Dude, because... Yep. Because <laughs> I am. Ah, because I am. Outro crew, uh... How, on a scale of one to WTF with an exclamation mark, where did you, where, where do you, how, how surprised are you at what happened today? Because I think I'm personally well past WTF exclamation mark. Yeah.